Well, every year, 12 billion workdays are lost due to anxiety and depression. Dr. Richard Levac is here to help you cope with your on-the-job stress. Okay, yes. Doc, <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Um, 12 billion workdays. Uh, 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 worldwide. worldwide. Yes, worldwide. But nonetheless, that's a lot of workdays lost because of depression and anxiety. Yes, and what's really interesting about the latest figures is that anxiety has jumped to the number one issue, the number one issue for people having difficulties at work. It was not even in the top five in 2017. Mm. So anxiety has become a huge drain on workers' capacity to function well and not take leave of absence. 300% increase in leave of absence mm. from work due to anxiety. Because you say on the job stress, and, and, and I start to think, is it the demands of the workflow and things like that, but not necessarily. No, the, the uh, psychology, uh, the American Psychological Association, trying to understand why this big jump in anxiety thinks that we're sort of in a post-traumatic stress situation after COVID. Hmm. So COVID, three years of COVID, and then we end up having wars in Ukraine, wars in Gaza, inflation, uh, intense heat. Uh, people just don't feel quite as safe. Hmm. People experience, th there are two types of anxiety. It's a little more complicated than that, but there is specific anxiety where you're anxious about getting something done or you're anxious because you're dealing with a difficult employee. And then when that stress passes, your anxiety goes away. And then there's free-floating anxiety, where you just wake up anxious, like you feel you're, that something bad's going to happen, but mm -hmm. you don't even know what you're worried about. Mm. And that's what's increased in our work population. People are just more anxious and don't feel quite as safe in the world. Mm. And that's reflected in, in our political situation. Right, right. And I was just going to say, it, it, do, is it kind of like you're taking on the burdens? I mean, these are things that you cannot control. That's right. And, and people are, are taking on these burdens and they're, they're kind of uh, living with it. Yes. So how do, they, how do they manage, like how do they get rid of these, like you said, this free flowing anxiety. anxiety? Right. Well, first you have to ex uh, understand that you have it. You know, often we get into a rhythm of our lives and we don't reflect on how we're feeling. Mm -hmm. But to wake up in the morning, we shouldn't wake up anxious. We shouldn't wake up driving to work anxious, like we're behind, we're late, if mm -hmm. we're not. Once you uh, understand, I am anxious, what exactly is d doing that to me? And how can I switch off those negative, free-floating thoughts? Right. And then how can I take care of myself? What is my work-life balance? How do I take good care of myself? Because we're supposed to be enjoying what we do. Right, right. Okay, you said a key word. You said balance. Yes. And I feel like um, I tend to talk about that a lot with with many different people. If, if they're struggling in some area, it's like, what's the balance here? Because... Now we're bringing it into the workplace, and like you said, we're, we're losing 12 billion days throughout yeah. the year because of this anxiety and depression. What kind of balance can we look at? I know, that's such a tough thing, isn't it, to find? Because once we're on that treadmill, it's almost too difficult to get off it. Mm. It's like being cold in the middle of the night and there's a blanket 20 feet away and we keep trying to get warm and we won't get up and get a blanket. Right. Uh, it's the same way with, with prolonged stress. We just go on automatic pilot and we just have to do small things. What can I do in the morning when I get up so that I go to work in a good mood? Mm -hmm. And it might be something small. Go sit on the patio and have your coffee. Mm -hmm. Don't be doing three things at once. Take a couple of minutes for yourself during the day and mm -hmm. do some deep breathing and meditate for a minute. Sure. Research shows those things do work. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Okay, well, real quick, before I let you go, I just wanted to know, are there some industries out there that are maybe more prone to, to, to burnout? Yes, compared yes, to so the rest? what happens is prolonged anxiety leads to burnout, where you just lose interest right. in your work. You're grumpy, irritable, Oof. you don't have energy, and it's people in the service, people who provide services, medical professionals, hotel workers, 
uh, people who deal with people all the time mm. and people who don't feel a lot of sense of control tend to burn out the quickest. Mm -hmm. So that's you have teachers, doctors, many have left the profession. Uh, certainly in England there's a huge exodus of doctors who's just overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So being, working with people, know that you get drained. Yeah. Take good care of yourself. Yes. I think at the end of the day, that's what we have to do. I, I, I know that I need to focus most days too, Doc. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank being you. here.